Good morning. I'm so glad to see all of you here. We have such a good crowd, and we have a whole row of cog bills. Gene wanted to know, did they get any kind of prize for packing a pew? And I told him no. No prizes for packing the pew. So glad to see uh, Stacy and Linda's kids here from Little Rock. The announcement's in the bulletin. Uh, there's one change in the announcement. The CE committee that's supposed to meet on Wednesday has been moved till tomorrow at 5 o'clock. So you people on the Christian Education Committee take notice of that. Um, uh, and there's a, there's a notice about a congregational meeting. A congregational meeting on um, Sunday, November the 14th for the purpose of electing elders and deacons and one trustee uh, for the coming class. 
We have had a busy weekend and our weekend is not over yet. But I don't know how many of you made it downtown to the fall festival. You could have been there and I would have never known it. There was a jillion, I don't know how many that is, but the streets were full of people. We had our booth and they were hard at work um, passing out candy. And I wanna thank Stephanie Jackson who moderates evangelism committee too many names to call. People helped set up the tent. They bagged and handed out candy. Um, just, it was a wonderful turnout and a good representation of our people were there. This afternoon, the trunk retreat is from three to five. If you, um, and, and I, let me stop right here to say thank you to all, yous, all you who brought candy. It has been well used and given out and we're gonna give some more out this afternoon from three to five. It ought to be a really good time. Our Opportunities friends and Evergreen friends will be here. Plus um, some of our children and grandchildren, we've recruited um, several from our family and friends of theirs coming this afternoon. So look forward to that from three to five. I think that's all my announcements. I invite you to take this time and prepare your heart to worship God. Please join me in saying the words of the call to worship. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, who do you say that I am? And Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let us worship God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, you built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone. Join us together by their teaching so that we may be a holy temple in whom your spirit dwells. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
may be seated. It is because of God's own invitation that we come to this time of confession on Sunday morning. We are invited here by the one who said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We seek rest from the burden that our sins have brought upon us, forgiveness of our sins. I invite you to read with me the printed prayer and then take a few moments in silent confession. Let us pray. Lord God, only you are holy, yet we imagine that we are righteous, excusing our own faults while pointing out those of others. We are quick to lay burdens upon our neighbors, but slow to help with their own. We take credit and give blame. Because of the grace you have shown us, we are slow to show mercy. Forgive us, O oh God, and create in us clean hearts, that we may serve you with joy and thanksgiving. Hear now our silent confession to you. Here now the sins that we have confessed in silence and those we have confessed aloud. Forgive us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God's word of pardon is this for you today. What shall we say then about all these things if God is for us? Who can be against us? Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. seated. We will sing the prayer for illumination, hymn number 175, and we will sing all three verses. Occasionally it happens that Reformation Day, October 31st, falls on a Sunday. Most years we celebrate All Saints and Reformation Day all at the same time. But today is Reformation Day, October 31st. 503 years ago today. 503. Martin Luther nailed his 95 complaints against the Catholic Church to the door of his church. And from that point on, 
Church history was changed forever. We are here today because of Martin Luther. And we stand on that sure foundation that he laid 503 years ago today. Today is Reformation Day. I invite you to listen to the reading of the word as we find it first in 1 Peter, oh, Hebrews, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with the first verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And then from 1 Peter, chapter 2, beginning with the fourth verse. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture... See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Then to you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders had rejected has become the very head, the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Come to him, the living stone. Let yourselves be spiritual, be made into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer again. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. After living with a building contractor who started out as a carpenter, actually a carpenter's helper, for 35 years I know a little bit about building. A very little bit. And as I wrote this, I had to check with the builder to be sure I had this right. He said I did. There are three rules of building anything. Number one is you have to start with good tools. If you don't have good tools, you won't have a good result, but that's probably true in any profession. You have to have good tools. And the second thing is you have to do the job right the first time. Because if you don't, there's gonna be a second, maybe a third, you got to get it right the first time or you'll end up doing it again. When we lived in Austin, Greg worked for a building contractor and all he did was frame houses, that's all, just frame houses. And they framed multi-million dollar houses in Austin. And it happened several times over those years that his framing company was called on to go into a house that some other contractor had already started and it didn't go well 
and they took it all down and did it again. Multi-million dollar houses. If you don't do it right the first time. And then the third rule is this. If you don't build on a good foundation, nothing you build on top of it will stand. You have to have a good foundation. Years and years ago, we lived in a house that apparently didn't have a good foundation, and we would wake up and find a new crack in the walls almost on a daily basis. And Greg would fix them, and then there would be another one. You have to have a good foundation. Jesus, the son of a carpenter, knew a little bit about building. And what he knew was you had to have good tools, you had to do it right the first time. And if you didn't build on a good foundation, it wasn't going to last. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do, who do people say that I am? He got a variety of answers. You heard that in the call to worship, Moses, prophets. And then he said, but who do you say that I am? Peter's response, thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus' response, upon this rock I will build my church and not even the gates of hell are going to prevail against that. Peter was renamed Cephas, the solid rock. Upon this rock I will build my church. The early church, the first church, thought that Peter himself was the rock. I, I do believe he was the first pope of the Catholic Church. Peter himself was the rock. Well, later on down the line, we have come to believe that Peter himself was not the rock, but the faith like Peter's. Peter's faith is the rock upon which we are built. Who do, who do, people, who do you say that I am? Not just everybody out there. Who do you say that I am? the Christ, the Son of the living God. So it's not unusual that as you listen to the verses from 1 Peter, Peter talks about the foundation. The church is built on Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the foundation. And then we are living stones. Therefore, we're also part of the foundation. When we lived in West Texas, one of the Presbyterian churches in Midland, down the road, was building a new sanctuary. And it was fascinating, some of the things that they did. And one of the things they did, I've always been so impressed with, before they laid the foundation of that sanctuary, they asked every family that wanted to, to bring a rock, any size, rock, stone, and put your family's name on it. And they laid it in the dirt. And then they poured the foundation. I have always loved that. That is a visual symbol of living stones that literally became a part of the foundation of that church. Well, tomorrow being All Saints Day, we do remember the, the saints that have gone before us that were part of the foundation of this church. I begin to list the names, names of people who I never knew, but whose names still reverberate within these walls. Nada Greer, Josephine Beck, James Ward. Let's see, the Greisers, um, other names, Oglesby's, Rory's. I know those names, never knew the people. But that says a lot, that we still know those names. 
Okay, these are the names of people I did know. Ed and Grace Malcolm, Zell Moore, Sydney and Penny Smith, Jick and Dooley Hall. Help me name those names. I can't remember them all. Surely you remember a name. John Calhoun. How did I forget? Who? The Cranks, George and Florence Crank. Josephine Beck. Sally Dill. George and Lynn Kramer. Who? George and Lynn Kramer, yes, the Kramers. I thought of Cornelia Woody, Carmen McFerrin, the Lacey's, Jean Scott. Scott, the Thompsons, yeah, Kathleen Hignott's parents, yeah. We could go on and on. Those people became the foundation of this church. We still know their names. We still see their faces. We still know the things that they did. The foundation of this church. Well, it causes us to wonder, what kind of a foundation are we leaving? What kind of a foundation are we building for our children and for our grandchildren? What sort of living stones are we that this church will remain? And years from now, they'll be saying, Ruth and Buddy Bell, Margot Strickland, a ton of Cogbells, the Deskins, the Richards. What kind of a foundation are we laying? We have some pretty good tools here. We've tried to do it right the first time and not have to do it again. And the foundation upon which we build is critical. Amen and amen. I invite you to stand and we will say together what we believe about God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated while the ushers come to receive our offering. Let us pray. We bring our gifts this morning in gratitude, in gratitude for all that you have already given to us. And we pray your blessings on these gifts of tithes and offerings that they would be used to do your will in this place. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Please remember Debbie Vion's family and the passing of her father this week. That funeral service was yesterday afternoon. Uh, Joan Boyles is in um, encompassed rehab, um, fell and has a leg injury, and she is there. So we will continue to pray for Joan and for her family as well. Please take a few moments to pray silently before we pray together. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, we give you thanks now for all of those who have gone on before us. 
who have shown us not only the meaning of this church, but by their lives, what it meant to be your people. We thank you on this day that we still stand upon the foundation, upon that solid rock, our faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we stand on the shoulders of all those who came before us, who also became living stones, a foundation of this church, And we give you thanks for these who went on to their glory during this past year. For Leota Cobb Walker. Reverend Cliff Ford. For Edna Upchurch. and for Wayne Rhodes. We give you thanks and we remember them, those lives that were so well lived and so well loved. And we give you thanks for this church. We are grateful for the time of worship and for the freedom to worship. And we look around us and we are grateful for friends and for family who love us and support us, who laugh with us and cry with us, who forgive us and whom we forgive. We pray that you will be with all that we do in this place. The plans that we make and the effort that we make, that we would continue to be living stones, that we would continue to be the salt and the light of the world, that we would continue to be the people you have called us to be. Hear us as we have prayed in silence. And as we pray together the prayer you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
glad to see each one of you here. I hope you take a few moments and welcome all of our visitors. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Father, and as you go, remember, in the goodness of God you were born into this world. By the grace of God you've been kept all the day long, even to this very hour. And by the love of God fully revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, we are even now being redeemed. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.